reason why I'm bringing up the binary code is because we're showing people how to heal through the arts. We're showing people the truth about Africa. The binary code came from divination spiritual systems right here in Ghana in Nigeria. This is the original code to computer programming languages, to any syntax that deal with digital. There's so much talent and beautiful minds coming out of Ghana and Nigeria, but people have stifled themselves. People haven't been able to reach their capacity. We're bringing the resources. This particular tour, we're not just operating here in Ghana. We'll be in LA, we'll be in New York, we'll be in St. Louis, we'll be in Atlanta, we'll be in uh, Miami doing our Basel, we will be in Rwanda, Qatar doing the World Cup, and Brazil. We'll also be talking about the Afro-Brazilian community, business community that we will be inviting over here to Ghana. We're taking this opportunity to connect what has not been able to happen. A lot of people have saw how the diaspora came here during the year of return, but most money didn't get trickled down to the economy. Everyone complained about that. What we're doing is we're coming up with the solutions where African business owners who are legit can connect with diaspora. The, the city is not changing. But what this tour is going to do is going to impact the Ghana con economy in a major way. Because each tour stop that I just mentioned to you, we're honoring a billionaire. So we're going to go inside and we're going to talk about the artwork that's in there so you guys can get a better view of who we're honoring and why we're honoring. done this work. As we said, the name Pele comes from the northern part of Ghana. So what does that tell you? His roots are Ghanaian, to some extent. But at the same time, this is going to welcome Afro-Brazilian business community to come over here to Ghana. Do you, have you noticed how many Ghanaians actually go to Brazil now? There, there is a huge attraction. Back in the 19th century, a lot of Afro-Brazilians actually moved to Ghana in Jamestown. And now, with this new intertwining Afro-Brazilian artists, football, sports, fashion, it's going to make them want to come over here. Now, back here, we have Virgil Abloh. We all know who he is. Colin Mbappe. Muhammad Ali and Pele again. Virgil Abloh's legacy. His legacy is bigger outside of Ghana. We just started the Ghana Tailor and Dressmaker Association training. What does that even mean? There are 17,000 Ghana tailors in this country, and they're the informal sector. They're the backbone of the country. We have financial literacy training for them. We're going to have, uh, we have an actual sport, uh, a company called Jose. They're a tech company, and they actually sponsor getting them loans for sewing equipment and accessories. But we're not going to just stop there. We're providing retirement savings accounts for them as well. Because these women are a part of the community. And what did I say outside? I said that year of return, a lot of money came into this country, but a lot of people said they didn't get a piece of that. They didn't get a piece of that pie. We're going after the informal sector because they need a piece of the pie. We know the solutions, and we're here for the solution. That's why we, have to, that's why we were called home. We were called back here to help break and shift a, a spell that has happened here. And when I say a spell, when I say that, I'm talking about the loss of memory of your ancestors. Losing that knowledge that's always been here, but we push it away. And the more we push away our truth and our heritage and who we are, the more lost we'll be. And I'm sure everybody's tired of being lost. Because I know I was tired of being lost and not knowing any connection to Africa. Not having any connection to Africa. Africa has healed me, and by it healing me, I was able to produce something bigger outside myself. This is showing abundance. This is the start of a lot of things that are going to shift in the country. Virgil Abloh's legacy, by being bigger outside of Ghana, is going to spur a good caliber of people to come here and invest in the fashion scene, come and invest in the fashion school, come and invest in a clothing textile factory. These things aren't hard to do. All these other countries are doing it. 
But it doesn't happen here at Ghana as much because people get stifled with the, the talk. And we're not about the talk, and we're actually actioning things. That's why you're here today, because this is a dream manifestation of us being able to come back here and show not only love, but also be able to put money in people's pockets. Because like I said, the CD will not change. But what will change is the economy. Ghana Feels Good is a hashtag. We have Twitter on board as an Amplify sponsor. We have uh, 200 artworks in production for this particular tour. Now, what does that do for Africa? It makes Africa look up here where it should be. It's not where, well, we, we're not begging for opportunities. We are the opportunity. We are the talent. And I want people to know that here. The talent is right here, better than Europe, better than America. But people also don't put a value on themselves as much as what they should. But once these artists get their work shown internationally, a lot of attitudes will change. A lot of mindset will change. And we're going to go to the next one, and I'll explain the artwork over here, because we got, we got levels to tonight. showcase, but Mr. Ben Bravi is someone who is open to telling his story about being Pele's bodyguard of 12 years. That's going to inspire so many people here. That's the whole point of this, is to inspire people and make a change financially, spiritually, physically, and mentally. It's an all the way around win for Ghanaians. And we're here to make sure that this continues. So we'll go to the next room. So here we have Lupita, Nami Osaka, and I, I know you don't know who this man is, James Stewart. James Stewart is a multi-black billionaire from St. Louis. He's almost worth $6 billion. And it's not about his money. He's someone who heavily invests in the art scene. And this is one of the people that we're going to honor on the tour because he's someone that will actually come into Ghana and invest heavily in the art scene. Ambassador Andrew Young. He's been an advocate, he's been a, a politician for decades with King. He ran, he ran Atlanta for so many years as a mayor. And he's always done business in Ghana, Senegal, Nigeria. He's always advocated for businesses to do business in Africa and build wealth. Donda West, Kanye's mom. I'm sure you guys heard that album before. And we're going to go over here to what we have. Let's see if the artist Serena Williams, as you know, she's a legend. We're honoring legends. So that, I mean, if, you, if you're not coming here to be legendary, you're wasting your time. This is supposed to inspire people to become legendary at the same time. And it's in you. It's in you. Don't doubt yourself. You're always, somebody's always better at something in this room than what somebody else is and tap into that power. Another athlete that we have, I want to know if the artist is in the room, else we'll get him to talk. Let's mention his name, Brandon. Okay, Brandon, okay. And Chadwick Boseman, as you know, rest in heaven to this brother. Black Panther 2 coming out, and he's someone who advocated for, for Africa. So we want to just walk around and share the pieces with everyone. And if anyone has any uh, questions, Q&A, when we do interviews, let me know. We'll, we'll get started back with the event. So thank you guys for your time. And my company is called Renaissance, and we're here to show people how to heal through the arts. And what is healing through the arts? Well, we chose this campaign, Ghana Feels Good, which is a hashtag, by the way. Road to the World Cup Global Art Tour. Pele, for so many years, has given the world his energy. Right now, he's trying to heal from recovering from his particular uh, situation. So we're celebrating and honoring him and giving him his flowers. Because this year, not only is the World Cup happening, but Ghana's going to the World Cup. 
So this campaign also is to get business owners and individuals here in Ghana to get behind supporting the Black Stars going to the World Cup because guess what? Just like we're sending Pele our good energy, we want to make sure that we send the Black Stars our good energy because if they win the World Cup, which they will, you heard it here first. This is actually going on record. You heard it here first, they're gonna win, and you're gonna you're gonna be laughing when they win, and you're gonna be celebrating with us. But and the reason why I say that, March twenty second, on a Tuesday, I showed Pele's Netflix Net, Netflix documentary at the Virtual Hub, VIP Moving That Experience. The following Tuesday, Ghana qualified to go to the World Cup. Okay. That same weekend, I go to the beach, I meet Mr. Ben Brabi who's Pele's bodyguard of 12 years. And he connected me to the family right away and they got on board with the tour. So this is all divine, because this is the best time that we're going to have right now to grab hold of the World Cup. Ghana's the only African country that went as far as, as, far as is what they did. And this particular team is strong. So we have a lot to be proud of. So I, I, what we want people to do, that's why we're in the media right now, start supporting the black stars. We're, we're too quiet in this country. We're way too quiet because as soon as we start giving them our energy, they're going to say, oh, we got a force. We've got the country getting behind us. They're going to be excited to represent Ghana, excited to get out there on that field, excited to win. Because if they win, we all win. All right. Perhaps we do not know exactly what we must do to give them the energy. What exactly do you suggest? Sure. Well, for one, Ghana feels good. We have different things on our social media that we're engaging people with. We're about to have a, uh, another show coming up where we're highlighting all this art for different Black Stars players. Getting people engaged, letting them know who they are. Letting them know that, hey, economically, Ghana can win. The city isn't going to change. And by the city not changing, what do we have to do to change? We have to make the economy change because this country has been built off of importing so much stuff. And if we keep importing, the city going to be 20 to 1. You know? So what can we do to make that we can't necessarily change the currency, but we can change our behavior and change the ways that we make money. There are so many opportunities. Why do we see so many people come here into Ghana and make all this money and someone who's been living here all their life is like, oh, Charlie, I don't have a dime. I'm broke. But there's only because of lack of resources not getting to the right people. What this tour is allowing us to do, we're highlighting so many people, but some of these actual athletes and some of these business owners and leaders will actually come here and invest in the country. Let's say you have a concrete company. Somebody may say, okay, you've been operating for 10 years. Let's see what we can invest in. That's how you start merging the worlds together because Ghana is abundant with opportunity. There's no shortage of opportunity. So there shouldn't be no shortage of poverty. But the mindset has allowed for the poverty to happen. This is why we're waking people up through art and the ones who resonate and get on board, those are the ones whose lives will be impacted. All right, my final question. How do we change the mindset? How do we change the mindset? Well, for one, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You need to start honoring your ancestors. You need to start remembering the knowledge base that was here. Okay. The knowledge that was once here, you know, these are people that built Timbuktu. So Timbuktu was known for the libraries. But here, you know, people may not even have a, a connection to that we actually build libraries, we actually built a civilization greater than ourselves. But guess what? Whether you believe it or not, you can see it firsthand. Ghana used to be called the Gold Coast. What does that mean? That means all this gold is in the ground. Ghana has a lot of agriculture. If you go to the poorest neighborhood in here, in this country, and you ask them, what would you do if you had a $50,000 investment? I guarantee you the answer would be, they would buy land. That lets you know the land vibrating out of Africa. Since everything you can stick in the ground grows, it lets you know the people grow. The people are strong, but people also have lost their connection and reality and not recognizing that they did come from mighty people. And we're bringing that back, even for African Americans. This isn't just for Ghanaians, it's for Nigerians, Rwandans, Afro-Brazilians, a lot of Afro-Brazilians will fly over here and start doing business because they have a professional business community as well, and that's where inter-trade happens. These things have to take place, and somebody has to step forward in a way that's innocent. And when I say innocent, meaning art is a way to connect. Fashion is another way we're connecting. Sports is another way we're connecting. And then all the other business verticals go within that. Thank you for watching Nation One TV. Kindly subscribe for more news updates.